This is something that we get asked about a lot, um, how we successfully run our business together as a married couple and make it all work. And just to give a little bit of background, if you're new here, I became a solo real estate agent when I was 18 and Spencer and I got married at 19 and 20, so we were pretty young. And then Spencer jumped in and joined me in real estate a couple years after I got my license. And uh, he jo- jumped in and joined me full time <laughs> right off the bat. And we're now in the top 5% of the Berkshire Hathaway network in the nation Man. out of 20,000 other agents. And I ju- the only reason I say that is to just show that we have been able to successfully build a real estate um, business together as a couple and we aren't just making it work or getting by but we actually have a blast and really enjoy what we're doing and um, in our lives running our business together so yeah these yeah these do you have anything to time flies when you're having fun mm-hmm. it went by really fast. Um, yeah. I, I remember growing up in in uh, school and the teachers are like well it's not really a job if you really love what you're doing and pursuing that as I got older it, that's absolutely true. If you truly love what you're mm-hmm. doing, um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that, that feel the same way, it it's not a job anymore. You know, it just becomes a part of your life, part of something you enjoy. And luckily, I get to share it with my beautiful wife, Mariah Christine Crawford, which I'm so thankful for. It's, it's wonderful, and yeah. I couldn't uh, be happier than I am today. So this is a really good time to be alive. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to talk about. So these, um, these tips and these stories that we're going to share today, um, are things that we believe can be applicable to you, whether you are wanting to run a business of any kind as a couple, or if you're just running a household or parenting or anything like that as a couple, because at the end of the day, those are really, you know, considered working together too. And hopefully, um, you'll take away things from this that you will be able to apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we first got started or when you first got started, so I had my business, I'd already been running it for a couple years and then you jumped in and joined me. Were there any curveballs or things that we had to overcome when you first jumped in and it went from being just me to both of us? Well, that was the, the fun thing is I got to a get licensed, right? That's the big obstacle. But then you get licensed. You're like, what do I do? And (laughs) one thing that I had that a lot of people don't have is a super good mentor, whether it was you, uh, Berkshire Hathaway's principal brokers or just other agents in the office, um, which is unbelievable to have agents in your office that have been in the business for 20 plus years to just really look over. They have their office doors open. You get to walk in and ask them questions any time of the day. Um, is I had to ask myself, what can I bring to the table now? Mm-hmm. Um, once I did get licensed, I get to see you. I followed you and I, I had to determine my role in in what's going to make us more successful because at that time you were already successful um, in a sense and I just wanted to do more, build more. Obviously, I quit my job cold turkey. I think we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But um, I had to really define the relationship. Where am I going to fit best in the role that's going to make us the most successful, the most money, and just overall support my family mm-hmm. uh, because that that's what it's all about. And there's one thing that I really had to ask myself is, is where am I going to help Mariah succeed where she currently isn't? And one thing I knew that I could bring to the table is organization. Organization was a big factor. Um, in her office originally, she did not have a filing desk or <laughs> filing cabinet or anything. It was all digital electronic. And that's just simply not how I work. Um, I do both. I, I hard copy everything. So I print off, have a lot of prints, and I keep everything on file through my computer as well. But she didn't have any of that. And so organization was a big difference to where I was like, how are you doing this off of memory or in your notes and your phone, computer, whatever? I had to have it in front of me. So that's something I did bring to the table. Um, but originally, I just had to define the relationship. Where am I going to be a good fit for the Vetris Crawford Realty Group? Um, what can I bring to the table to get us more uh, business? And and then how am I going to fit this without making you feel like you failed in some way because like I said, you didn't have filing cabinets. It Mm -hmm. worked for you, but it didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was something I really had to go through as a curveball and obstacle um, once first jumping in with you. Yeah, I definitely, um, I don't think that 
our business would be where it was where it is today if you didn't jump in and join me and bring all of those skills that you brought to the table because to go along with what Spencer was saying something that I think that we did right is when you're working with your spouse in business or in life in general or running any kind of business together is finding what you each are good at and what you each enjoy doing and that's mm-hmm. really what we did yeah. we uh, you know the way we run our business is we're not just doing all of the same things and we don't just try to work with the same clients or yeah that's you know we're not there together 24 mm -hmm. 7 yeah every day we each have separate delegated roles and we know what we're what our strengths are and we know what our weaknesses are and that's what we focus on for Mm -hmm. example i do all the marketing you do the cold calling Mm -hmm. um i'm working with relocation clients and and uh, this is something that we even take into our own household in our lives. And I think it helps us a lot. Like you <laughs> take out the trash and I do the li- the dishes. Like we know what we're each good at and you what we enjoy role. doing. So mm-hmm. you don't have to like, mm-hmm. in, a, in a sense, like communicate about it and be mm-hmm. on top of each other and step on each other's toes. Yeah. You just know each other's roles and know it's going to be and getting done. So basically you don't even have to communicate anymore. It just becomes a way of life, mm-hmm. which has really been a stress relief for me, mm-hmm. especially just knowing that you're good at those things. I'm going to stay away from that and let you perform. Mm-hmm. And then you know what I'm good at. And I get to perform in those ways as well. Like yeah. cold calling, prospecting, those type of things and taking track of those leads. Um, it, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I think that the worst thing that we could do for our business is if we were both just trying to do everything. And I think we'd just be running around like chickens with our heads cut off, not knowing what to do next in our business or what has already been taken care of. And um, I, I just think that having dealt, knowing each other's strengths and weaknesses and having separate tasks that you each do based off of those things is key. Yeah, and I think it's it, it makes our marriage even better that way though too. Mm-hmm. It's because we are not gonna be on each other's toes and just the relationship when it comes to that work boundary, we just know um, where each other's at, what you're doing. And if a task needs to be performed, we just communicate and verbalize it. Hey, can you post this for me? Or just, you know, do your role. And that's been really helpful. That leads us to more success in our business. So. I agree. Another question that I get asked a lot about us working together is if it makes it hard on our marriage. And something that I hear a lot from other couples who work together is that, um, for example, when they go on a date night, they make a rule where they don't talk about work at all on their date. And I think it's super important to... um, I think it's super important, especially in our industry, to schedule time together where we aren't looking at our phones or getting back to clients and we're able to give each other our undivided attention because if we don't schedule that in this industry, something always comes up and it just doesn't happen. But that being said, we definitely still talk about real estate even when we are, um, you know, together not working because the way I see it is we're both passionate about what we do and Mm -hmm. it's more than just a career to us. And having a rule where we don't talk about real estate on our date night, for example, sounds to me like telling a couple who both loves golf and is passionate about that, telling them, okay, no talking about golf while you guys are together. Like that's just, that's just kind of how we do things and and what works for us in that yeah. in that aspect it's and then sometimes sometimes it is necessary to I just guess say, you do need to turn to it say off. Yeah. no <laughs> no phones no computer i don't need to reply to this email right now and that's when you say undivided attention time mm-hmm. but what that's a super good point though because what you said is like hey this is our life we are passionate about this just like you would be about golf why can't we work and talk about it you know over dinner because it is a part of our lives whether mm-hmm. you like it or not if you are really in it and dived in and and full on uh real doors mm-hmm. um and making money and successful in that um so it is hard to shut off it, it's it is there mm-hmm. we've had plenty of dinners where we just start talking you know and then we just how did we get here to business and talking about this <laughs> transaction? We just were like, how? But then we're just having so much fun with it. Mm-hmm. Is, is who cares? You right. know? It's That's... like a bond that you and I get that nobody else can have. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really fun because that actually helps our marriage mm-hmm. in some ways. Um, but there is once when I first got in the business mm-hmm. and I was, I, I, have a, I have a friend and him and his wife were both realtors. They just got married to, they got licensed at the same exact time. And um, unfortunately 
they they ended up not making it the distance they just broke up probably last year um but i I asked him i said hey man like what what kind of happened you know and he said dude simply we just did not work well together when it came to business Mm -hmm. and real estate He, he basically put the blame on his business failing the marriage and um i'm sure there's other things involved but that was just a big factor and for me, of course, it was in the beginning of me getting licensed and working with you. So what I got to do is really take note of this and apply that to my life and make the decision, this isn't going to happen to me. Mm. I don't want business relationship to just overcome and consume my marriage because in the end, I'm married to you first. I chose you to be married. I got Astrid. It's my daughter. And I'm. this is my family here. And real estate is just a way to produce and succeed and, and push where we want to be and grow. So um, I really took note of that. It was just, we got to separate business and personal at times. Yeah, sometimes you do. Yeah. That's, that's so, true. And it was really cool. It was that's really true. fun to see. And you know, he's still a realtor and he's super happy right now. And he's, he's actually successful within, within his boundary and in area he's in. So, um, to go along with that, something that I hear a lot from other people is like, you work with your husband. I don't, I love my husband, but I could never work with them or I would never <laughs> want to be with them that many uh, hours a day. You don't day want to be or, with me that much? Yeah. Babe? Like I, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I, f- I feel like m- more often than not, actually probably like 90% of the time when people hear that we work together, they think of it as such a negative thing yeah. or uh, like, I don't know, That's like not good, but to me, I think of it as a really positive thing. And I think you should be able to w- spend a lot of time together and still really like each other and enjoy each other. And, yeah. and there's a lot more that goes into that, but it kind of makes me sad hearing how everyone thinks of it as like such a negative thing or like you have to have such boundaries like work and marriage, but you can't do those together because you need separation. And I don't know. I just don't Some see it that way. Just they're not. I guess everyone's that, different and yeah. does things differently, but, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, every, every relationship's different. Yeah. And what's really unique about Mariah and I, if you get to know us and in, are in, 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 around us more, is we are bipolar opposites. Bipolar opposites? You mean that, polar? Polar opposites, excuse me. We are bipolar. That, that, thank you for that. It's true, though. <laughs> Mariah's way of thinking is so much different than mine. Like... It, it's mm-hmm. unbelievable. And I sometimes just get to hold myself back and laugh about it, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> because I just get to let her do her thing <laughs> and somehow it ends up working. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's because there's no other woman like Mariah. <laughs> um, the way she thinks and operates, Mariah is like the wind. <laughs> that's that's a super good way to put it. And um, But I think that's a good thing because we're awesome. able to learn from each other. If we were both, we if we were both exactly the same or had the same mindsets about everything, Thing, then we would never be able to learn and grow because we'd just be i don't know things w- would, would probably get normal. boring yeah we would seriously be normal and mm-hmm. i don't consider us to be all that normal we yeah. do a lot of things <laughs> differently i would i would think than other people so a lot of my friends are like spencer what the heck what how do you they always what ask do you do how, all day what do you, do? How, when? <laughs> you don't have a real job <laughs> you hear that a lot well, what do you even more, do? <laughs> there's a lot more into it in, in real mm-hmm. estate, whether it's it's waking up at 5 a.m., going on showings during the day, um, nurturing my daughter uh, for the three hours to take a nap and then going to do the work later on, later that night, um, paperwork in odd hours, uh, you know, DocuSign, getting papers signed for, for my clients. Uh, pre-approval letters is a is a really big deal right now because we got to submit offers right here right now and a lot of lenders they're nine to five you know um i've connected my team uh and he's there at 10 at night sometimes if we need it and he's been there 100 percent. so there's there's all sorts of things that i do that are just so far in the background and it's really fun for when people ask Spencer, what do you do? How it, it just, they just see me drive my car around, you know, or just in a suit, you know, they don't, they're not actually, they with don't really you understand. There's, yeah. there's a lot of assumption in this industry <laughs> for sure. I agree. So when Spencer got into real estate, he quit his job and uh, cold turkey and just jumped in with me and he didn't ease into it while still having another job that pays you consistently part-time he just quit so 
I thought we would share some tips for anyone who is wanting to maybe quit their job and join their spouse in real estate or quit their job and start another type of business in general based off of what we've been through because most agents make their first sale about six months into the business, believe it or not. Um, however, it's actually recommended to plan for up to 18 months of not making money before you finally start getting business. And wow. that is while working full time at real estate and not seeing any results yet. And I think this is the case in a lot of other businesses, startup businesses as well. So uh, Spencer, were you scared at first when you quit your job and and jumped in? And do you have any advice for, that you would give someone who's wanting to quit their nine to five job and start something new, whether that's real estate or not? Heck, yes, I was terrified. Um, <laughs> if I can tell you the truth, honestly, um, I was pretty scared. A, I saw you and I knew what you did, and I had a great you know teacher shadows, and I te said I have our office to to work with. But in reality. Once you get licensed, it's like jumping in with the wolves. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's houses everywhere, but how the heck are you getting getting in them? You know, that's a big <laughs> question. And a lot of people, a lot of new agents, they spend their time making their website, you know, and doing all these things, you know, that's not going to make them money. And and when you quit your job, a big part of it is you don't have a paycheck at the end of the month, right? So I had to figure out how am I going to make money? How am I going to make my mortgage? And um, there was one option, get my foot in the door. <laughs> so because uh, I knew if I got my foot in the door, if I got face to face with somebody, I had a 50% chance on them saying yes, <laughs> or no. Um, and that happened seriously. And it took me three, three and a half months to get my first, uh, listing. Mm -hmm. Um, and now think about it. Once you get a listing, the job's not done. There's plenty right. of work to do. Now, <laughs> yeah. realtors, brokers with your, with your first listing, you get a hoop, you get a holler, maybe go out to dinner, but you got some work to do. Work yeah. to put in. Um, how do you put your listing on the MLS? How do you schedule photography? How do you negotiate once you do get under contract? How do you set up showings? When it's your first transaction, there's a lot to do and yeah. that you just simply don't know about because you don't have the experience. But quitting cold turkey, I worked in Portland uh, for, what, three years? And without that check coming in at the end, I was stressed, really stressed. And there's a thing called commissions breath when you're a new agent. And you simply want to stay away from that because there's a desperation in your voice and tone while setting up appointments or even, even presenting an offer. Maybe if it wasn't the best offer, it's true. There's some agents that just, they look at a paycheck rather than the best for their client. Um, and that's, that's a rule that you have to follow. Mm. What is going to benefit your client the best? Um, and you cannot have a personal gain through anything, no personal interests. It's solely about your client because you have a fiduciary duty to them. Um, so that was one thing I really had to focus on is getting my foot in the door. Um, and that came through cold calling and picking up the phone and dialing. And I seriously spent so many hours doing that, um, and door knocking because I knew I just had to get face to face with somebody. Now, if you're going into real estate and thinking, yeah, you create your own schedule, you have a nine to five job. That's simply not the case either. You're actually working way more than 40 hours a week. Cause like I said, you're, you're sometimes working weird hours of night, you know, like kind of like always on, you know? always on. And <laughs> yeah. so when we were talking about like our marriage and how like you can't go down this rabbit hole of just consuming yourself with your job and you got to separate yourself in marriage. Um, it's so true. Like, when can you shut it off? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's a biggie. Um, and if you want to get into real estate, I really do recommend quitting your job and forcing yourself to be in it. Yeah. Because if you're not forcing yourself to be uncomfortable or be placed in the situation, you're simply not going to succeed in anything. Yeah. Um, there's a video my brother and I used to used to listen to. Um, where the, there's a guy, he's a pump up video, he's an inspirational speaker, but he says he got, he met this individual at the ocean and the 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 person was like, what am I doing here at the ocean? Well, the instructor held him underwater and said, you got to uh, want to breathe or succeed as bad as you want to breathe. Um, and he was held underwater and, drown and drowning. And the guy was like, didn't you want to breathe? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I did. Well, that's how bad you want to succeed. And that is what I did um, to make myself mm -hmm. and you successful um, mm -hmm. and grow this amazing brand, the Vetchers Crawford Realty Group, um, in, in this awesome real estate market we're in. So. 
That's so good. That's so true about what you said about like being all in or all out when mm-hmm. it comes to real estate, because there's how many agents and do you know, in there's Oregon? like over 2,800 in our state. Yeah. Just in our state. Yeah. And, and so why would someone work with you? You know, you really have to be an expert and in my opinion, be passionate about it because otherwise you're doing your clients a disservice if you're not giving it your all. And if you're just dabbling in seeing if you like it like that's not going to work out you're no gonna, you're gonna waste a lot of time it, it doesn't help anybody mm-hmm. seriously it puts them all in a worse position than they they were before mm-hmm. well, i want to just uh comment you know your attitude about the customer comes first is really a refreshing thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah no thank that's you. super good thank yeah. you Warren. Yeah. yeah that's that's what it's, it should be with everybody selling right mm-hmm. right right yeah. and that's sometimes it's an inconvenience like you have to put the client's interest above your own and sometimes it sucks for you. You really don't want to, or, you know, it inconveniences your day or whatever's going on, but you really just have to um, have that mindset in, in all things. Well, it shows in your business, by the way, well, thank <laughs> thank it you. does. And, and how you share on the radio and everything else, it really makes a lot of sense. It's a, it's a great thing you've put together here. Thank I'm really, you, I'm excited each week when I hear the show <laughs> Thank and you. I'm, I'm being a part of it. In fact, it's great <laughs> to be a part of it. Hey, that's it for this week. Thank you for listening to Brian Spence. 